Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a thriller films from 2022, titled Shut In. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. In the opening scene, a little girl named Lainey is seen running around the farmland, picking up an apple among the rotten ones. She heads back home with an apple in her hand, and gives it to her mom, Jessica. The mother rolls her eyes as Lainey has been collecting way too many apples that go uneaten, and tells Lainey that they don't need them. Jessica is a single mother with two young children named Lainey and Mason. The small family lives in Jessica's late grandma's house in the middle of nowhere, and as a former drug addict, Jessica is struggling to get by and is planning to move out of town, in hopes of getting a good job and starting anew. As she is moving out, she throws all the food inside the car, before working on clearing up the pantry. The house was so old and damaged that the pantry door doesn't open from the inside, so to keep it from closing Jessica blocks it with a brick. She starts to throw all the things inside a garbage bag, when she sees her grandma's Bible, and decides to keep it. But unbeknownst to her, the brick wasn't tall enough to hold the door, the door slowly starts swinging shut, and locking her in. Lainey? Listen. Jessica turns on the lights and calls for her eldest daughter, Lainey, to open the door for her, but the young child isn't strong enough to twist the rusty knob. So Jessica tries to open and kick the door, but it wouldn't budge. As soon as she notices the door's unscrewable hinges, she shouts for Lainey, and instructs her to get whatever tools she can from the red box on the porch. Lainey fetches her a screwdriver to loosen the door hinges, but she is unable to do so because the screwdriver is not the right one for the screw. After some time, we see Jessica sitting down, seemingly have given up. But then, Lainey announces that her daddy, aka Jessica's ex-boyfriend, Rob, is at the house to fetch his toolbox. With no other option, she asks for his help. This is yours. Oh, thanks. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Wow. Calm down, Jessica. Rob the ex is a drug addict, and thus, Jessica gatekeeps him from interacting with her children. Case on point, he is currently high and he's brought a fellow addict friend of his, Sammy, to the house. What makes it even worse, Sammy is a convicted child molester. But despite it all, Rob still tries to get back together, saying that Jessica is too much of a snob now, because she thinks she's better than them now that she's clean. In his mind, they were a power couple back when they were both still drug addicts, and he wants them to be that way again. When she refuses his advances, he gaslights her for being an incapable mother for getting stuck inside the pantry, and slaps her. She tries reaching her phone to call emergency, but he violently scoops her up and locks her inside the pantry before she could. Hearing all the noises, Lainey comes downstairs and Jessica instructs her to lock herself and her brother Mason in her room. Rob also doesn't stop there, he begins stabbing nails through the door, impaling Jessica's palm and causing her to scream in pain. She can also hear Sammy offering to take the kids to his place, and desperately begs Rob to keep Sammy away from their kids. Once he's done, he slides a packet of drugs into the room, and tells her that he's going to leave her locked in until she starts using again. Jessica doesn't get a response from Rob after that and hears the front door close, which means the men have left. She wraps her wounded palm with table napkins, and after a while, she hears someone's footsteps running downstairs. It turns out to be Lainey, and the daughter innocently asks her what she's doing in the pantry, and informs her mother that the pantry door has been boarded shut, making it impossible to open. The only thing Jessica could do for now is instruct her child to lock the front door, but we're not sure if little Lainey understands how to do this. To make it even worse, she can't seem to find Jessica's phone anywhere. Being very young, Lainey is scared to go to the bathroom alone, and so when she couldn't hold in her pee for much longer, she pisses by the door, and begs for Jessica to not get mad at her for doing so. A few hours later, Lainey announces that she is hungry. Meanwhile all the food in the house has already been packed inside her car, which Keith Rob has stolen. The only sustenance left in the house is jars of Jessica's grandma's apple butter, and a bottle of liquor. She pours some apple butter onto a plate and slides it through the door, enabling Lainey to eat and asking her to feed baby Mason too. When night comes, we can see the poor mother lying on the floor to sleep. As it turns out, Lainey is lying on the floor right outside the door, because she is scared of sleeping on her own. 
On the next morning, she feeds her kids with more apple butter, and realizes how bad her wound has gotten. She asks Lainey to fetch her something strong and metal, but the child doesn't seem to comprehend what she means. The little girl keeps fetching her the wrong items, which frustrates Jessica and causes her to yell. When she hears Lainey cry, she apologizes immediately. Soon after, Lainey comes back carrying a screwdriver she found outside the house. With newfound hope, Jessica starts to chip at the floor tiles despite her hand injuries. She is confident that she can get out if she keeps digging. But her hope doesn't last long, Lainey announces that Sammy the child molester is in the house. This causes Jessica to panic, so she quickly instructs Lainey to lock herself with Mason in her room upstairs. As expected, Sammy walks up to the pantry door just to rub in the fact that he's going to take Lainey, feeling like it's his right because Rob owes him money. He proceeds to climb upstairs to look for Lainey, so Jessica tries to think quickly. Jessica then announces that she has Rob's meth packet in the room with her, and offers to trade it in exchange for letting her out. The bad guy takes the bait, but refuses to let her out, because he doesn't want to be on Rob's bad side. This leaves her no option, but to come up with another plan. She tells Sammy that she's willing to slide him the drugs as long as he leaves her family alone. The mother also claims that she is injured so she can't move around, and Sammy has to reach far inside for her to hand him the drugs. After some convincing, he does as asked. Only that once he slides his arm in, she stabs the screwdriver through his palm, and drives it deeper with a brick, trapping him there. He screams in fury and cusses at her, and after some time, he starts to beg for her to set him free, all the while she continues to chip away at the floor. When she keeps ignoring him, he starts teasing her by saying that Jessica will relapse sooner or later, because once a drug addict, always a drug addict. Vexed, she slashes his palm to get him to shut up. Night falls, and a storm rages outside, causing the electricity to blow. Scared, little Lainey starts calling for her mother and rushes downstairs, unaware of Sammy lying by the door. Sammy seizes the opportunity to snatch her, and begins threatening to break the girl's leg if Jessica doesn't let him go. When she hears her daughter crying, she gets so desperate that she pours liquor all over Sammy's hand. She then pulls out her lighter, setting him on fire, and forcing him to let go of Lainey. Unfortunately, fire also starts spreading inside the pantry, so she is forced to take it out. Sammy burns to death, while Lainey seems to have gone silent. Afterwards, Jessica prepares herself with a blanket and a candle, and falls asleep out of exhaustion. The following morning, she tries calling for Lainey to check if she's okay, but doesn't hear an answer. The whole ordeal takes a toll on Jessica, so she opens the drug packet, and is about to take it, but she backs out when she sees the Bible. Jessica then notices a dollar bill stuck in between the pages of her grandmother's old Bible. She goes through the holy book, and discovers a plenty of dollar bills stuck inside, serving as bookmarks for passages her grandma wanted her to read to remind her to stay strong. Also, she finds a note which contains a special recipe on how to make the best apple butter. She got emotional by the gesture, and ended up throwing the book at the cross hanging at the end of room, because this discovery won't help her escape. The cross breaks, and when Jessica moves to pick it up, she notices a leak in the ceiling. She tries ripping the wood planks apart, and discovers that it isn't hard to do so, because the ceiling wood is weak and soaked in water. An idea springs to mind, so she checks on Sammy to make sure he's dead, before pulling the screwdriver off his hand. Up next, she continues to pick away at the ceiling, until she creates a hole through. It doesn't take her long to get out of there, and now she can escape to the upstairs bathroom. Pieces of apples are scattered all over the hall, and the bedroom door is locked shut, forcing her to break in. Once inside, she witnesses how the bedroom is a mess, and there is a mound buried underneath layers of blankets. She prepares for the worst as she uncovers the blankets one by one, until she finds her two children there, lying still. Mommy, mommy. <sighs> Luckily, Lainey and Mason were just sleeping. The kids were hungry, so she takes the children downstairs, and takes Sammy's motorcycle keys. However, the storm is still raging outside, and Rob took away her car keys so she couldn't drive away with her car. She figures there's a chance it might be unlocked, so she makes a break for it, only to discover that the doors are indeed locked. 
This leaves her with no option, but to break the door with a brick to fetch some food. But as they rush back inside, Lainey dropped her animal crackers. The little girl later begs for Jessica to fetch the animal crackers for her. As the mother goes outside to please her daughter's wishes, we see Sammy standing at the window, meaning that he's still alive after all. Jessica panics, and tries to get inside but he's locked the door. She grabs the stone and uses it to smash the glass in the front door. Once she's in, she follows the sound of her children's cries upstairs, and finds Sammy holding baby Mason and a knife. He threatens to gut the baby, while Jessica begs him to change his mind, but this time Sammy is looking for revenge. Just in time, Rob shows up, pointing a gun at Sammy, and scaring him into letting the kid go. Jessica takes her kids to safety, while Rob thinks that Sammy had done something horrible to his children so he shoots the guy dead. He then asks her for some money, so she tells him that her grandma left some in the pantry. The man breaks the door open, and starts collecting the money from the floor. Jessica then asks him to let her and her kids go, but he won't let her. Instead, he's adamant in wanting to see her relapse, and asks her to take some drugs with him. Knowing full well how dangerous Rob is, she cooperates. But first, she asks him to fetch the rest of the food from the car. When he's outside, she prepares some apple butter, and makes him a sandwich. Rob seems absolutely excited once he's back inside, because he thinks Jessica is warming up to him again, and has agreed to relapse and become drug addicts together like old times. He devours the sandwich, and goes to prepare the drugs for them. Since they don't want the kids to see, they go to the living room, and Rob goes first, injecting drugs into his system. Jessica tries to buy some time, by saying that she isn't ready to take drugs again. This annoys the man so he points the gun at her, and violently manhandles her, while forcing her to tie her arm and inject the drugs. And then suddenly, the drugs he injected is starting to take effect. Jessica takes the opportunity to run when Rob wobbles. She runs upstairs to the bedroom, and as a last desperate attempt, she thinks about jumping out the window. But Rob catches up to her, and pins her to the wall, about to inject her by force. Just in time, all the drugs in his system gets his body to shut down, as he starts hyperventilating and crawling across the room. Jessica reveals to him that she put the meth inside his sandwich, and now he's overdosing. Furious, he threatens to kill her still, so she pushes him out of the window, killing him. The next scene shows a time jump, Jessica has changed her mind about moving to a new house, and decided to stay in the house she inherited from her grandma. She now makes a living by making homemade apple butter, and life seems to be looking up for her because she has made up her mind to never relapse again. The business is doing well as folks in town seem to love her apple butter, thanks to the recipe left by her late grandmother. And thus, the small family leaves happily ever after. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Shut in 2022. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.